Welcome to the Arizona Sonora News. I'm Nick Nolenberger. And I'm Kimberly Colliner. Arizona Sonora News is a news broadcast produced by students at the University of Arizona School of Journalism. We bring you news and sports from the Tucson area and the University of Arizona. Our first story takes us back to the January 8th shooting that killed six people and left 13 wounded. 2015 will mark the fourth anniversary of the tragedy. Jessica Schrecker takes us inside the Arizona Historical Society for more on the story. This is not about January 8th, but it's about what's happened since then. People were angry and people were upset, but when we got to the memorial and we were able to really take time to reflect as one community and as one country, we really started looking forward. Voices of those impacted by the January 8th shooting of 2011 echo through the latest exhibit at the Arizona Historical Society. Created through a partnership with the January 8th Memorial Foundation, the museum hopes to remember the victims and give Tucson hope. Nothing like that had ever happened in Tucson before. And so when it did happen, it, it just brought everybody together. And it's, we all became one. Ariola said the idea was sparked by Dia de los Muertos, a Tucson tradition and an exhibit the museum hosts every year. This year, she wanted to recognize the lives lost on January 8th. For some visitors, it hit close to home. Seeing like even one tile or one memory, just it was really overwhelming. So I actually left pretty much right away and uh, always wanted to make a point to come back. The artifacts collected here at the Arizona Historical Society serve as a powerful memory of what happened on January 8th, 2011. This exhibit will be open until the fourth anniversary of that day. It wasn't something that could simply be discarded. We wanted to, to capture the way in which the community grieved, to capture the way in which the community came together. Donations from the exhibit will go towards helping the January 8th Memorial Foundation in their efforts to preserve memories and find a permanent memorial site. For Arizona Sonora News, I'm Jessica Schrecker. Many of us honored our servicemen and women on November 11th, and the effort continues with nonprofit organizations like Team Red, White, and Blue who work with veterans year-round. Also known as Team RWB, the organization focuses on working with veterans to help keep them active. Marco De Leon, a veteran who was hit by an IED blast, leaving him with limited mobility in his legs, hiked up Tumamoc Hill in Tucson with the help from his team members. De Leon says programs like this one give him the motivation to keep going. Team Red, White and Blue invites civilians to participate in events alongside veterans. Civilians are, are mainly joining this group to support veterans, but it goes both ways. Team RWB says 30% of the people who will participate are not veterans. New data shows the number of sexual assaults on college campuses is on the rise. And there are a number of places around the university that offer self-defense courses. Code and Can Martial Arts and the Warrior School work specifically with women. The classes help prepare women for dangerous situations by training them with props, punching bags, and mock scenarios. Martial arts instructor Jessica Courtney said the classes help women gain the confidence and skills they need to fight off an attacker. Their main point is to take over you and not let you think, you know, oh my god, I'm, I don't have anything to do. Um, gives you say, yes, I got a choice, I can get out of this. The University of Arizona Police Department publishes a yearly report and it shows the number of reported sexual assaults rising, with five incidents in 2010, four in 2011, and nine in 2012. UAPD said there have been seven reported sexual assaults since the beginning of the school year. Authorities say though victims are often assaulted by strangers, there are an increasing number of so-called date rapes being reported. Rape is rape. If someone touches you um, without your permission, if they're going to disrespect, for you, disrespect you, that is rape. Police remind people to be aware of your surroundings at all times and call 911 immediately in case of an attack. After a young girl died in a hot car in Texas, a statewide organization is making a pledge to save lives in Arizona. According to Family Resources in Arizona, the leading cause of infants being left in cars is because parents forget or they simply don't realize their child is in the vehicle. And that's where the memory of a little girl named Ray Ray comes in. Ray Ray's pledge um, started after a little girl named Ray Ray was left in, in her car and died as a result. And the pledge, um, the, the mother got inspired because she felt like Ray Ray's life could have been saved had the child care provider called the family that day to say, you know, where's Ray Ray? It's so easy to be wrapped up in a moment trying to get errands done and then skip and not doing in order that you normally do. And it's scary because 
I don't ever, ever want to be in that position to forget what's really important because it's not something you could take back. New Discoveries Daycare in Tucson say its staff will call parents if the child doesn't show up for daycare. Coming up, that dreaded trip to the gas pump is a little less painful. An update on gas prices when we return. Welcome back. No doubt you've noticed the low gas prices. Gas throughout the state has dropped dramatically over the last couple of months, and prices are expected to keep going down. AAA says the statewide average for unleaded gas is around $2.73 a gallon. The price is down almost 35 cents from a month ago. According to AAA, 27 states are below $3 a gallon, and Tucson is the only city in Arizona with the lowest gas prices at $2.61 a gallon. AAA predicts the number will continue to decrease until the new year. The Arizona Department of Revenue wants to tax solar panels, but in some cases this tax would cost more money than homeowners are saving, and whether you own the panels or not makes all the difference. Arizona is the leader in solar energy, according to many national rankings. We're saving money and energy for the future. However, the state may take a hit after a new legislative tax proposes all third-party owners pay for their lease panels. They're thinking because there's a third-party owner that does not qualify for being used on site. 85% of solar-powered homes in Arizona are under a lease agreement. But the Department of Revenue wants to charge them a property tax that would cost them more money than they're actually saving. Solar panels that were bought up front are not taxed because they belong to the homeowner. However, the state doesn't think the same holds for panels that have been leased. The way the Department of Revenue sees it, they belong to the solar company and the product can be taxed because it isn't being used where it belongs. Either way, Alan and Susan, who have been solar energy users for 20 years, believe the decision simply doesn't make sense. This, this is a, a crazy idea. It's counterproductive. They, they have to do things to encourage uh, conversion to solar energy, not the opposite. The tax would cost $152 a year, and for most people that is more money than they are saving. For now, it is up to the Arizona Department of Revenue to determine whether or not solar panels that are leased get taxed. I don't know why they want to do it. It's not going to benefit the people. It's not going to benefit the climate. This decision may have both financial and environmental consequences. An updated cell phone policy may make it difficult for law enforcement to get your private information. With their recent privacy policy, Apple claims it can no longer bypass customer passcodes, giving law enforcement one more hoop to jump through. Tucson attorney Alfred McDonald says even if you give your phone to an officer, getting into it isn't easy. You do not have to give him a password. You don't have to answer any questions, you don't have to help him get access to that password information or anything like that. Even with restrictions on what can and can't be accessed from your phone, Lee Lee Claire from Tech Security Company in Tucson says most of our information can be found somewhere else. All of the information about who you're talking to, how long you've talked, where you've been, etc., that's all up in the cloud and or with your carrier or some combination of, of those things. While Apple's privacy update is sure to be a bump in the road for law enforcement, Lee Claire and McDonald say it's just a matter of time before law enforcement tries to find a way around it. All right, so Nick, if you could be anything in the world, what would it be? It'd probably be a pro athlete. I mean, it's the best of both worlds. You make good money and you're athletic. I mean, I can't complain about that. Pro oh, athlete. Yeah. Well, that's some, right. some wishful thinking on your cliche, part. Huh? <laughs> After the break, we discover that with hard work, any dream is attainable, and that includes being a singer at the Metropolitan Opera. Thanks for joining us. Our next story proves it's never too late for new dreams. Arizona Sonora News reporter Natalie Sanchez is in the studio for the story. This is a story of a man in his 30s who after seven years in the paint industry decided to take a leap of faith and chase after an old passion. From paint to opera, Anthony Khalil's career path as an opera singer is different than most. For seven years, he was a technical representative for Sherwin-Williams Company. When a friend asked him to sing at his wedding, he quickly realized his lost passion. After six months of voice lessons, he auditioned and was accepted as a Lindman Young artist at the Metropolitan Opera. But there's always, you know, that person who ends up taking a little bit longer to maybe get into the business, to get into singing, to understand that, you know, they have a passion for it, that they have a talent for it. Going in, not having 
certain portions of the education down, not having the languages down as most of the people did that were coming into the program. I felt, you know, a little behind. But with his training as a Linmin young artist, Khalil Howes now learned about the different languages, the different styles of music, and the stagecraft. I mean, he gets to observe some of the best singers in the world. So my opinion is that he'll do well. He'll do well on both accounts. He's got a great voice and he's great looking. After nearly three years in the intensive training program, Khalil is already taking principal roles. He offers advice for anyone who is not pursuing their true passion. Sometimes I think people get stuck in doing something they don't necessarily want to do in their life when there's a passion that they have. Um, and I think that everybody should take the opportunity to pursue it. Khalil finishes the Linman Young Artist Program with the Metropolitan Opera in 2015. For Arizona Sonora News, I'm Natalie Sanchez. Local libraries are literally going to the dogs to help children develop their reading skills. With the help of Friendly Dog, Tucson libraries are doing their part to help kids improve their reading skills. As a certified therapy dog in the Read to a Dog program, Merle lends an ear and offers a calm and judgment-free environment for children. Just very friendly. When I read, it was pretty easy. So he can just listen. He was very friendly. <laughs> Literacy Connects is a Tucson-based nonprofit. They say almost half of fourth grade students read below grade level. The organization says by developing reading skills during primary school, children are less likely to drop out of school later. Kids who participate in the Read to a Dog program get a chance to add their name to the readers board. Well, it's the season for holiday giving, and Central City Assembly Church is giving homeless people not only a free warm meal, but a family to enjoy it with. Many organizations around Tucson offer free meals to those who are homeless, but local church, Central City Assembly, just south of downtown Tucson, tries to do things a little differently. And the group says it's more than just a meal. It means a lot to the homeless population. If it wasn't for this place, there would likely be people that would, would probably starve to death. It's called Family Meal, and we're kind of unique in that we we don't necessarily do things like a soup kitchen, not that that is bad, um, but that's kind of more like everyone just kind of gets in a line and they just kind of get their food and go. Um, but we really want it to be more like a family meal. The church says they feed up to 200 people a night, and it looks like there's more help on the way for needy families in Pima County. The new Salvation Army Hospitality House is scheduled to open in early January. Over the past two months, staff say they've turned away 40 families. The house has 91 beds now, but the new house will have more than 100 beds and add two family units. You can see today there's a lot more homeless women, children, families, single fathers. And so the, the current house does not, is, not, is just not equipped to handle all of those different um, aspects. Stay with us. When we come back, we'll hand it off to our sports anchor, Courtney Avon. We've got a lot to talk about from El Tour de Tucson to U of A basketball. Stay with us, that's coming up next. Welcome back to Arizona Sonora News. I'm Courtney Avon with your sports news. The U of A men's basketball team is back in action and a familiar face is back on the court. Arizona Sonora News reporter Cecilia Alvarez has the story. Brandon Ashley is back after missing time with a foot injury last season. The Wildcats advanced to the Elite Eight without the forward, but missed his production down low. Ashley spurned the NBA to stay at Arizona this season. As Ashley puts it, he is fully healthy and ready to go. Confirmation that, that you know, I'm still, uh, you know, able to compete on this level. Um, I, I still feel good about myself, and, and honestly, you know, playing well like that, it definitely is also a, a confident booster as well. Through the first three games of the season, Ashley is averaging 11.9 points per game. While fans are excited to see Ashley back on the court, his teammates are even more excited. Junior center Caleb Tarzuski said his job is easier with Ashley next to him in the starting lineup. You know, having Brandon out there makes it a, ton, a whole lot easier um, for me to score in the post, and you know it's been uh, it's been awesome having him back. As the season progresses, the number two overall Arizona Wildcats have one goal in mind: bringing home the second national championship in the program history. Head coach Sean Miller knows that cannot be done without Brandon Ashley. Know, but Brandon's a talented player. You know, we've, he's played a lot of basketball here at Arizona. Uh, 
in my mind, he was hitting his stretch a year ago when he got injured. So it's, it's good for him to get off to a good start. Coach Miller says him and his team have a lot of unfinished business to take care of, and they will continue to honor the process until they get there. For Arizona Sonora News, I'm Cecilia Alvarez. The Arizona men's basketball team might get all the publicity, but women's hoops is hoping to give the men some competition. The Arizona women's basketball team went 5-25 last season and won just a single conference game. And this year, head coach Nia Butts and the Wildcats are looking to change that. Leading the way for Arizona is a pair of redshirt seniors, Candace Worthen and Allie Gloyd. Behind a group of experienced returnees and highly touted freshman class, Butts has a newfound depth to do just that. Besides losing their first two games of the season, but says she likes the outlook for her team, and it seems to be working. The Cats won their first game of the season on November 25th. I like the way they look so far in practice. So um, we just need to make sure that we continue to keep progressing, uh, keep getting better every day. Moving on to cycling, another successful El Tour de Tucson in the books. 7,000 people rode in the race, but one group in particular stood out. Rasan Bahadi is a championship cyclist and brought his family and friends to participate in this year's event. Based out of Los Angeles, the Bahadi Foundation works with inner city kids through cycling outreach programs like the one Rasan was in as a young child. It's a family affair. His dad Rashid rode in the 55 mile race. It's awesome because it, it creates a platform for other charities to actually raise money. All you have to do is get your team around you to raise money for a lot of different charities, which the Bahati Foundation is one, and we could definitely use the, the service and the help. The Bahati Foundation works with inner city kids to keep them off the streets and active. And here's a story that'll make you smile. Some Tucson kids will be very happy this holiday season, thanks to Wildcat hockey fans. For the third year in a row, the Arizona Wildcat hockey team and Aviva Children's Services hosted the holiday teddy bear toss. Fans threw teddy bears on the ice after Arizona's first goal. The Wildcats didn't score during last year's event, but this year they did, collecting 1,200 teddy bears. Don't go anywhere when we come back. Painted faces and costumes line the streets of downtown Tucson. Welcome back. To wrap things up, we head downtown for Day of the Dead. Tens of thousands of people gathered in downtown for a two-mile walk to honor deceased loved ones. The All Souls procession takes place every year and was inspired by the Mexican holiday, Day of the Dead. The streets were filled with dancing, singing, unique costumes, and painted faces. At the end of the walk, people gathered to burn an urn filled with letters of hopes and wishes for lost loved ones. That's the latest edition of Arizona Sonora News, a news broadcast produced by students at the University of Arizona School of Journalism. To see more Arizona Sonora News stories, visit our website, www.arizonasonoranewsservice.com. Thank you for watching. See you next time.